support oh my gosh it's been almost four months can you believe it four months can't even believe it's almost been four months since we've last gathered how are you we're not even in the same world anymore are we <laughs> i know that my world has definitely rolled over many times so i'm so excited to catch up with everybody, welcome to Starseed Mission Support. I see many familiar names in the live chat. I'm so excited to be back with you guys again. And anyone that's tuning in for the first time, hello, welcome to Starseed Mission Support. This is our weekly live stream where we support the Starseeds around the world with training, healing, good vibes, communing. Yeah, today we have an exciting conversation about the latest, greatest conversation. Ah, CERN, it's all over the place. Um, I was able to call together 250 angelics and light workers last week to watch the CERN collision live. It was next level. I mean, I can't wait to tell you all about it. Um, I announced this in my grid work telegram group so if you want to get tapped into the grid work situations go ahead and join the telegram group the link is in the description box um, but that's a place where, where I get to share more intel that uh, I don't share on big social media platforms for obvious reasons so if you want to get tapped into our grid work you know it's more real time because I was basically able to announce this a day before it happened and 250 of you showed up and we made an amazing prayer so if you want to join that group it's down in the description below um, and uh, yeah we're gonna get started in just a couple minutes we'd like to start with just a little sound healing welcome everybody back to the mothership the mothership of the Earth Star Academy headquarters for the Starseed mission we're really excited to be back finally. So let's ride into the soundscapes together for a few minutes and then we're going to dive into our conversation today. the heart of the universal unity, connecting to the heart of our sun, lighting up the heart field here together, 
Let us tune into the vibration of divine love, divine coherence, sacred harmony. Allow us to release all tension, any incoherence, any static, any ungrounded anxious energy just allow it to flow tuning into the vibration of waterfalls the negative ion just feel more grace open up in your space let's take another breath in together breathing in the prana exhaling any energy that is not serving us any anxiety worry tension and one more breath in together breathing in pure love pure coherence exhaling into our unity into a groundedness of our togetherness with God Welcome back to Starseed Mission Support. It's June 9th, 2022. What a crazy time. We are here on planet Earth. Really excited to talk about our subject of discussion, even though I'm sure everybody's wondering how momhood is treating me. I am in absolute mom heaven. I am a Cancer. It was my birthday a couple days ago. We are deep in Cancer season, and motherhood is, I feel like I've, was made for this. <laughs> um, having a little star baby is also incredibly intense because they're so sensitive and it just feels like I'm in this whole new level of mastery training with her and I, I'm planning on being back for Star Sea Mission Support on the weekly. So I know that you guys are going to hear lots about my process with her. I mean, even just last night, I had this crazy experience where um, since the technology was turned on, actually, let's start there. Let's start by diving into CERN and what we experienced, and then we're going to roll into that, uh, what we experienced last night. So I'm so happy that you're all here tuning in. Lemurian Chick, the singing was definitely live. We sing live here every week, and I think I'm going to start doing more healings because I, I'm, I was tuning into the field before um, getting ready for this week's Star Sea Mission Support. And I was tuning in to the collective and feeling into you guys and 
feeling into what the collective is needing. And I feel like I'm going to bring in more healings as we're diving back into the Cersei mission support world. We're building a studio. Um, and I'm going to bring out the singing bowls more. We're going to do more um, healing and sound healing as we're going forward. But um, yeah, let's dive right into it. So last week, um, I'm sure you heard about it because it was all over. It was all over um, social media. It was all over the news. Um, CERN had decided that they were going to uh, turn on their Hadron Collider after a few years of not having it on or something like that. And almost immediately, because I noticed that they were live streaming it, which I thought was really strange. Um, I guess now we have the technology to live stream things. And even back 10 years ago, we didn't really have that as much. So first of all, it was very strange that they decided to live stream it. And second, they decided to do it on July 5th. And July 5th, it's basically the peak of when the Earth, the Sun, and Sirius are in direct alignment. So this is what I like to call the Syrian Stargate. Similar to do, similar with the Pleiades Gateway, when the Earth, Sun, and the Pleiades are in alignment and the Stargate opens and we're able to communicate clearer with the Pleiadians and the Pleiades consciousness. Um, during this gateway, which I'm very familiar with this gateway because I was born on the 6th, um, we're very much connected in with the Syrian energy. And in January, during the Stargate alignment, we did a collective grid work um, ceremony where we worked with the Syrian gateway, Syrian starlight sound chamber. And we had, you know, hundreds of people meditating with the sound chamber a couple of times. And we built this amazing network of divine love around the planet. And then, you know, made a baby, had a baby, went through the newborn phase, kind of couldn't keep up with, you know, the, the collective work as much. And uh, just last week, realized that it was actually the Syrian alignment that they decided to do this. So that was very interesting um, to me, because I wondered if they were aware of this. And, you know, it's very likely that they were aware of this, just because the elites are very connected in with ancient esoteric knowledge and the Egyptians were very connected in with um, Sirius, obviously. And so the Syrian alignment is something that is widely known in the esoteric um, networks. And so then I wondered if they were trying to usurp the Stargate energy. And so immediately I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. Like we can have another collective grid work ceremony. And so I threw a message out on the Telegram group real fast because I found out about this like a day or two before. And, you know, I didn't really feel like I wanted to go all, all out, like posting on all the social medias and stuff. So I just posted in the Telegram group, which is our um, grid work hub anyway. So again, the link is in the description for the Telegram hub um, where I'm able to um, where I'm able to share things that I normally don't share on social media because it's a little bit more protected and non-censored, right? So I posted it um, and started tapping into the energy. And what I was getting from the, uh, the Syrians and the star beings was this festive energy. It was such a festive, a celebrative energy. It was like, what's going on now? The Syrian alignment is always super celebrative. Um, because, you know, they really feel like everything going on earth right now is this big party, is this big celebration. And I totally get that. I totally see it. I know that sometimes it can be hard to tune into that vibration when we're here on earth and things are a little bit nutty. Um, and so there is this dimensional shift and we're going to talk about the dimensional shift and what happened during that meditation. So uh, at the live stream, and I know some people are saying, it feels like it was fake or it was filmed beforehand. Some people are saying that it's filmed in April. I've seen just about every theory under the sun at this point. And for me, you know, I don't use my human mind to think about things. I just think that everything is this really fun opportunity. And so today we're going to talk about our, our mastery training that um, is going to be in this video is going to be our arc or our... Um, way of perceiving, okay? Because our mind 
our mind is the easiest place for us to get hijacked. And, you know, hijacking human consciousness is something that the elites actually consistently talk about. If you go into the Telegram group and you scroll up, I post a video, a very brief clip, a two two minute clip, and I, it's from the JP Sears video that he posted a couple months back. But he essentially is the main advisor of the chairman of the World Economic Forum. And he's basically straight up saying, haha, who cares about the God in the sky? We have the technology to hijack human consciousness and we're going to do it because we are the owners of the planet and we are God now, basically. That's basically <laughs> to sum it up. I mean, I was shocked to watch this video because on the one hand, we all know that, right? It, so far, we've been dubbed conspiracy theorists and whatnot. But if you have you know, somewhat of an open third eye and you're looking at the world, and we talk about this in um, in ESA and the Earth Star Academy here on this YouTube channel a lot, this manipulation that we have on the planet. But to see this person straight up talk about it in the way that he was, the super arrogant way, and just literally mock God, I was like, oh my goodness. I was shocked to see it in front of me, but I was not shocked that it was in front of me. You know what I mean? And so for me, I understand that the hijacking of consciousness is something that has been going on for a long time. And so um, we must be the captains of our thought. And who is the captain of our thoughts and our thought process and the way that we think in our mind? It has to be our soul. It has to be our heart. It has to be our heart intelligence. And so that means if anytime we read something on the internet or see something and it totally changes our way of being and it swerves us, now all of a sudden we're just repeating that one thing. This is the hijacking of consciousness at work. All right. And so I think that our perception is very important. One of the main, um, one of the main aspects the one, one of the main superpowers, let's say, of the third eye. And we have many third eyes, by the way. I've counted five of my third eyes. Our main psychic third eye that interfaces with this physical world, let's say, the main superpower that it has is that it is the control system of our optics. Okay? Optics is the angle through which we perceive reality. So it's not even about what we're paying attention to, right? Our focus is very important, but what we pay attention to is less important than how we pay attention to it. How we pay attention is the most important thing. And how we pay attention is the optics, is the angle through which we're perceiving. And we should be the captain of that angle. We shouldn't allow other people to choose what angle we're perceiving from, okay? And of course, this has to be married with critical thinking. One of the things that, uh, one of the ways the new age community is hijacked is that we throw critical thinking out the window. We throw the human self out the window and we're like, oh my God, I'm seeing numbers everywhere. And I think, I, I think that this, you know, this new intuitive hunch that I got and we're not um, sliding it through uh, our critical thinking or our masculine energy inside of our mind. And making sure that we're grounded and clicked into reality. And so this is when we can just fly off into the spiritual realms, totally ungrounded, and we're not able to do anything, right? And this is why this hijack exists in the New Age community, is specifically to keep the light workers ungrounded so we're not able to do what we came here to do, which is ground in a whole new material reality, right? We're here to create a new reality, which means we're here to anchor something in the fabric of this physical existence okay and so there is a membrane that we're going to bring in today that we want to talk about there is a membrane between let's for the lack of a better way of speech call it 3d and 5d because that's the lingo that we're all using right we have the 3d world and the 5d world even though that's not exactly accurate um and we're not going to dive into why that's not accurate today because we don't want to talk about too many things all at once, okay? So many of us have heard about this concept of bifurcation. And the idea of bifurcation is basically that there's two timelines or two realities that are unfolding simultaneously on planet Earth. One is the one we're seeing where, you know, there's scared people and 
factories are set on fire and this group of people are trying to corral humanity into this reality um, of transhumanism and total government control. And then on the other hand, we have the spiritual community, clearly everyone on this call, who are experiencing a whole other thing. We're not experiencing the fear that they're trying to project through the technology. We're actually sensing this divine consciousness coming through the higher dimensions. We're awakening through our DNA and we're realizing that we have this divine purpose. And we feel this actual uh, brilliant joy that's awakening inside of us. Right, and we feel that the this timeline, this future that we have, is actually going to be heaven on earth. We feel in our soul. I feel in my soul that soon, maybe who knows in how long, but one day, all of the children on this planet are going to be happy. We're going to have soul-oriented education. We're going to have people that do biodynamic farming, and it's just going to be this beautiful place where humanity is aware of soul, is aware of God. And we're living in what we would call heaven on earth, okay? And so clearly there's two different vibrations of realities that are existent simultaneously. And there is something that is deliberately keeping those two realities apart. And many things are. Many things are deliberately trying to keep those two realities apart. And there's many viruses and manipulations of the new age spirituality, okay, which is basically creating, I call it the new age glass ceiling. The new age glass ceiling is actually two parts. The new age glass ceiling is on top, meaning it says 5D, right? There's actually 15 dimensions in this universal time matrix, and even energies beyond that, okay? And but then in on the earth, we're only talking about 5D. Now, there is universal consciousness distortion all the way down from 11D. And so, so long as we're just tapping into 5D, the distortions can still exist. So we're tuning into 5D. We have this new age glass ceiling that's not allowing us to ascend past that point and actually connect into our original source consciousness and embody that right? So there's this glass ceiling on the top. Now there's also this glass ceiling on the bottom where the new age is basically saying, stay in your heart, the heart and above, right? And what it doesn't tell you is that you actually have an earth self. You have this human self that has gone through whatever it's gone through on the earth and all of your ancestors and all this stuff. And so without healing the earth self, we are totally ungrounded and disconnected from the earth population and human society at large. Okay, and you might be asking, Z, why would we want to associate with the human society at large? You know, it's a mess out there. I just want to ascend. I just want to go to heaven on earth. Why would I want to hang out with the muggles? And the reason is we came here to create heaven on earth. We didn't come here to create heaven in our mind. <laughs> we didn't come here to create heaven in the astral plane. We came here to create heaven on earth. And in order for us to do that, right? We came here to awaken divine love in all of humanity, or I shouldn't speak for all of us. I will speak for myself. I am here to create heaven on earth and return divine love to the heart of humanity. Let's just sit with that vibration for a moment, okay? Feel the vibration of divine love as a spark that is awakened in the heart of every human being, all right? We sense that that is what heaven on earth truly is, right? And so here we begin to discern that there is a heaven on earth that is this static kind of brilliant light that is almost this false light. It's glamorous, but it's not grounded in any reality. And in that space, light workers have no idea what they're doing, right? We're lost. We're like, what is my mission? Is my mission to just be love and light and try to be happy all the time? Or am I supposed to be doing something? What am I supposed to be doing? Well, in order for us to align our mission, we basically have to break the new age glass ceiling, both at the top and at the bottom. And we break the new age glass ceiling on the top by engaging in frequencies beyond 5D, streaming frequencies from actually 12D and beyond, because 12D is the original Christ geometry of consciousness, Christ's love, Christ's intelligence. 
And 12D is just outside of the universal consciousness field where there is no more distortion. Perfect love, okay? Perfect love. Um, and, you know, it's even difficult to use words because it's a vibration that is hardly found on this planet now. But I'm not talking about love that we feel between people. I'm talking about perfect love between all of creation, source, the love that source has for the earth, for humanity, the love that we have for, for God, for each other, for all creatures. And so we learn to connect with energies from 12D and beyond. Now, this is how we break the new age glass ceiling at the top. And how we break the glass ceiling here at the bottom is by healing our earth self. Okay, healing our earth self means we're learning to incarnate our true soul identity into our physical body. This is what every human being was destined to do, was to incarnate these beautiful vessels that we have as our soul. And the soul is meant to click into our light body through the nervous system, through the fascial system, through the nadial system. And when our soul is fully flowing through our physical body, we experience our human self as our soul. So this is what embodiment is. And the true activation, the full activation of a starseed is by coming into awareness and integration and embodiment of your soul as a star being inside of your physical body. And the way we do that, do that is actually through healing our dimensions one, two, and three energies, which is the thing that um, let's say these, the CERN situation is not wanting us to do. Okay, so essentially this machine, what happens through um, the use of this machine? And at first I want to say that um, in the third harmonic universe, uh, which is dimension seven and nine, I have an aspect that is Andromedan. And my Andromedan aspect is a geneticist right, is a light field geneticist. And this, you know, higher dimensional aspect of myself was a scientist for a very, very long time studying light field genetics, uh, genetics, but from the orientation of an ascended civilization. And so how ascended civilizations engage in science is always God-led in complete reverence and respect for nature and God, in complete awareness that there is a unified consciousness in the universe that gives life, gives rise, gives structure to all things. And there's a deep respect as a form to learn about that thing. And so what drives scientists, and I'm sure many of you also have higher dimensional scientist aspects, and this is the thing about being a starseed is that you have dimensional aspects that we're meant to remember you're meant to remember your skills, your experiences, your expertise from your other dimensions, from the lifetimes that you've lived. That's the whole point of being here, okay? This whole phase of not knowing who you are, not knowing where you're from, it's definitely just the beginning of the awakening. Because at some point we remember, for example, you know, I was an architect and a city planner. And for those skills, I was called here onto the earth to share those skills with human civilization. And this is true for all star seeds. Okay. And so the key thing that I realized from my scientist aspect is that there is such a deep love in my heart for creation, for God. And it's just this natural part of me. And this again is true for all star seeds, right? Because we come from these higher civilizations, and this would be the backbone, the foundation of any ascended civilization or any golden age, is that all well, let's say the love of, div of, of God, divine love, is awakened in all hearts, okay? And so knowing that scientists are meant to engage in science with such a deep level of respect and reverence in our heart, because this is how I remember we did it, right? It's like, oh, I want to understand how creation exists. I want to understand how life exists. I want to understand DNA. And I love creation so much. I want to understand it. And from that place, we are led by intuition. What is that leadership? It's divine leadership. We're hearing God and source and creation. We're being led by that into our discovery. And this is how science is meant to happen, right? This collaboration, this co-creation between our curiosity, our intent, and source. 
And so understanding that that is the uh, correct orientation of science and scientific exploration, we realize that way in Atlantis, what caused the fall of Atlantis was when science began to steer away from that template that we just talked about. When man began to embody arrogance of feeling like because we have this knowledge, now all of a sudden we can play God and do these experiments without you know, respecting nature, without understanding, without asking, without any sense of reverence, basically going about things in a way that into, is integrated from the place that there's no such thing as God, right? Most scientists these days are operating from this place that God, there's no such thing as God. Everything is just a, atomic and material. And so from that place, and of course, there's even a further along the spectrum is when the science is, begins to be used in, in an anti-life, anti-creation matter, which is when, you know, evil magic and technology is brought together. Now, what is evil magic? Evil magic is essentially the use of universal creation mechanics in a self-serving manner. This is why the law of attraction is so sticky. Most of the things that are talk, taught about law of attraction is actually part of the reversal grid and locks people away from their true soul essence and the right hierarchy, the right coherence, the right architecture of our consciousness and our embodiment. And so back in Atlantis, we came into this point where science has developed to a point where we basically started to use it to manipulate nature for our human or for man's benefit. We started to um, experiment with things that we shouldn't be experimenting with, like, you know, human genome or crossing um, hy hybridization. You know, these things are... Um, not recommended okay for a lot of reasons most of the reasons are that humans have very low understanding of how genetics actually work okay how dna how light bodies how souls actually incarnate through the body these are high metaphysical teachings that we by the way teach in the earth star academy but earth and human scientists have very low understanding of these things and so for humans to then start to manipulate the human body and human genome, this is not a no-no, and I would say it's anti-christic. Why is it anti-christic? It's literally science. I will explain. Christos, the Christed path, is essentially the incarnation of divine consciousness into form, right? So what did Christ do? What did Jesus do when he was alive? He embodied his divine essence, right? And as he embodied his divine essence, he began to embody the qualities of God. The qualities of God are our Siddic powers, right? And the more that we align with our true essence and our true human destiny, the more of these superpowers that are going to come online. And we see this in all the great masters that have ever lived on our planet, right? So Christ, Jesus Christ, he was a role model he came here to show us what the path is, what the Christed path is, which is the embodiment or the materialization of source, of God consciousness. And this is the path that we are all on. This is the path that all of humanity is on. This is the collective destiny of humanity. And this is the path of all spiritual people. Anyone that is called to a spiritual path, what is our highest spiritual nature? It is pure source divinity. And so... Christ literally means divinity into form, okay? And so we understand then that there are very specific passageways of energy that consciousness embodies into the physical body. And those are our nadial, those are our chakra systems, those are our layers of our dimensional light bodies um, all the way into 12D because beyond 12D is non-structural, right? And so 
that knowledge and that awareness is what allows for us to go on this path of Christed embodiment to activate our highest level of DNA expression, right? So if that's what Christ is, then what is Antichrist? right, is the agenda of blocking soul incarnation. And now we're seeing why Biden's campaign slogan was battle for the soul of humanity, right, is that it is literally this spiritual battle where we are blocked from our embodiment process. Oh, Okay. Whew. All right. And so then now we're understanding why genetic manipulation, genetic experimentation, and crossbreeding and all these things are anti Christic, anti Christ, is because without understanding of the Christic path, without understanding the Christed template of our DNA, it's impossible to interface and evolve, upgrade our human form, which is essentially what the transhumanis, uh, transhumanism um, agenda is trying to do, right? They're saying, oh, I'll just put this chip in your brain and you'll be better than you are now. And this is very, you know, literally mocking God and saying, God did it wrong. We did it wrong, right? And the truth is just that most humans are operating in the first three densities of our body with little awareness beyond that, which is not supposed to be the way it is. Because in a ascended or golden age, in an ascended civilization, we are meant to come into a world and be fully supported in our embodiment. We are meant to be fully held in a space where we're taught about the nadial system, the chakra system, the layers of our light body, so the soul can incarnate into the body. And as the soul that is fully connected source incarnates into the body, it activates these capabilities inside of the body that humans don't even know about. We're not aware of it, right? People think it's miracles. Well, it's literally, it is miracles. Miracle is part of our biology, our bio-spiritual structure, okay? And so then we realize that Clearly, our Earth scientists in this day, they're very much following the footsteps of our Atlantean um, time wave. And this is not to scare you. I'm not saying that the same thing is going to happen because it's not. What's happening is we're going through a healing wave. So you know how sometimes you can get triggered because you had a trauma when you were a kid and then something in real life happens and it triggers this trauma and you actually get this opportunity to heal through it? So humanity as a whole is going through this experience right now where we're healing from the trauma of Atlantis and we're supposed to learn from our mistakes, okay? And this is not, I'm not even going into the manipulation by the negative aliens. We're just looking at this slice of the reality right now. Um, we're meant to learn uh, how to um, study science, wheel technology, and all of those things in right relationship with God, in right relationship with creation, right? And so these scientists are basically manipulated into developing this technology. This technology did not come from humans. Um, I believe this technology was given by the Zeta gray people who actually messed up their own timeline. I mean, time matrix continuum, and that's why they're here. And they messed it up with technology very similar to this. And so they're basically trying to create this technology to get back into their time matrix, but they can't. Okay. And so now they're here and they're like, well, I guess there's twofold. We're either going to go back there. And if we can't, then we're going to take over and hijack hybridize. So this is, there's a huge hybridization program push. They want us to think that we want to hybridize with gray aliens. And it's like, as a high, as as a multi-dimensional, higher dimensional geneticist, I'm going to tell you right now that we don't hybridize on a ship, right? Every star seed has higher dimensional genetic strands that were woven in through light, woven into the genetics through intention and divine love. We don't have to hybridize with machines in metal ships. 
Okay. And so any person that's getting abducted, they make you think that you want to be abducted or you chose it or you agree to it or, oh, I can't wait to meet my hybrid babies is very creepy in my, in my experience, just speaking from this higher vantage point of having worked with the starseed mission. I mean, I helped the starseeds weave these genetic strands. That's why I'm in this seat talking to you guys right now and activating these DNA strands here in these live shows. And that's why you recognize me. You're like, I know you from somewhere. It's because we've been working together. But from that vantage point, we understand that, you know, we only work with genetics in alignment, in reverence with creation. And we don't kidnap people and try to interbreed with them. <laughs> okay. So there's definitely an agenda that is wanting to normalize hybridization between humans and greys. And they're wanting you to be excited about it and all that stuff. But what did we just say? Without complete understanding of Christic anatomy, right? You, um, without understanding of Christic anatomy, any manipulation of form, any manipulation of genetics is anti Christic. And I just explained the science of why that is. Okay. So if you're interested in hearing that, just reverse the video <laughs> okay so now I, what i just said can be refracted into the realities with the the jabs right and um the different kinds of gmos that we have all that stuff all right so let's take a deep breath all right. Okay. So in order for these beings to continue having control over the planet and humanity, they have to keep humanity from awakening and activating our original genetic template, which our original genetic template, our human destiny, is to experience ourself as divine incarnate right? This is what Jesus Christ role modeled for us. This is what Christ consciousness, Christ path, what that is. And so what we have then is this Christ, Antichrist war, very scientific war that we have, scientific spiritual war. And My sense is that, first of all, obviously they have no idea what's going to happen if they just smash particles together. But as we were watching the live stream, it felt <laughs> to these higher dimensional aspects of my galactic self, I'm like, it kind of feels like these primates are smashing rocks together to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, because, you know, uh, it's very... What's the word that was used? Primitive? <laughs> yeah. And so the thing is, though, that what happened at the moment of collision, so for those of you that weren't there, we had 250 light workers on a Zoom call, and we were watching the CERN collision live, and we were basically right leading up to the collision, just spamming the chat box with what we want to see, the timeline that we want to see. Right. So the G's basically told me that this technology, we can use it to our advantage, essentially, because it's going to shift the timeline in some way. It's going to shift the fabric of reality in some way, because when you're dealing with particles and I think it's something crazy, like 13.8 trillion electrovolts. That they're smashing these particles together at. Right. It's, it's just quite ridiculous, but. Even though as I'm tuning into this, it seems ridiculous, the Gs are just showing me that um, they're wanting to use this technology to shift the template, but essentially we can hijack it. And if the reality was going to be shifted through this technology anyway, it was going to shift in our direction. And I felt this years ago where basically any moment the negative aliens or the cabal, every time they try to do something, they're basically exerting energy. Let's think about this in the way of exerting energy, right? Because creation has already intended for the fulfillment of heaven on earth. 
Creation and God is the most powerful force of creation in the universe. This is my belief. And I know this in my heart. Okay. In, in the Earth Star Academy, I break down what the free will experiment was in this universe that allowed for the fall to happen, that gave rise to all the negative things, and why it's actually completing, and what the hell we're doing here, why the star seas are essential in this. It's called the Christos Realignment Mission. We're basically bringing back all dimensionalities of this universal ba body back into coherence, back into connection, because we're evolving into the next uh, next lifetime as a universal whole out of this universal free will into another architecture. Okay. Whew. But when, okay, because God has intended for the creation of heaven on earth, there needs to be time elapsed so that physical things can happen that makes it happen. So for example, you want to build a house. You have this thought, I'm going to build a house and say you have the money, you have the land, you have the uh, resources and you have the construction team and you know that this house is about to be built and basically you're about to start right so somehow you already know through time and space this house is already built but it's going to take a year for that house to actually be built because the people have to move the rocks and dig the hole and put the wood where it's supposed to be so it's kind of like that we're the construction workers god has willed for heaven on earth to happen we're here on earth and so no matter what, this house is getting built, right? We're just here down on earth experiencing it as it happens. Now, because this intention and the trajectory, there's a lot of momentum, actually. There's a lot of momentum. There's not even a fight. There's no battle, okay? That's why it's really fun. That's why when I invited you guys to do the, the grid work, I wasn't like, oh my God, they're trying to divert the timeline. We have to gather now or it's, we're going to die. No. We just said, hey, it's gonna be fun. Let's get let's get together and hijack this machine because that's that's gonna be really fun for us to do together. Okay. So because the intent and the momentum is moving towards the holy reclaiming of this planet, any effort the negative beings put towards the opposite thing is actually gonna result in moving forward. Okay, so they're exerting the energy, but because the momentum is going that way, they're ultimately actually exerting energy in the opposite way, even though they're trying to exert it in, in backwards. Does that make sense? They're trying to put energy towards the fallen earth, but because they're exerting energy at all, they're actually exerting energy in a positive direction, no matter what they do, no matter, it's kind of like COVID, for example. Right? They wanted this planetary control, but I think millions of people woke up, right? And I, I think that we can really use COVID to our advantage even more right now. Like this is really the time, and this is what we're going to talk about in a second. Whew. And so essentially with this machine, they want to bring in negative energy. They want to lower the vibration of planet Earth. They want to basically create more density and momentum for the negative um, timeline of humanity going down the transhuman, uh, transhumanist agenda. It's funny, really. Um, but essentially, as the collision was happening, we had 250 light workers just <laughs> jamming light in there. We're praying. We have God coming in. And people are just saying, and we have all the kids are free and all the heaven on earth is here and all the things. And we did this for like 20 minutes. It was insane. So, yeah, and people had some crazy um, positive experiences. And the crazy thing is the next day, the Georgian Guidestones came down. And so that was a really funny thing, too, because that thing came down. And it's so funny. Of course, everybody has all of these different narratives. And again, we're going to come back to this optics thing, right? Your soul has to be the captain of your optics, which is your way of perceiving. It doesn't mean having rose-colored glasses on. It doesn't mean being, you know, not... Um, grounded and connected to reality to the point of being you know, to have magical thinking but it's just about uh, feeling you know if you're going to have a belief right okay what are the chances that you're going to find out really what happened over there 
at the Guidestones. Like, if unless you're feeling called to drive over there with your Sherlock Holmes underwear on and you got your little notepad and your little monocle, unless you're going to be committed to doing that and just finding out for sure what happened, why would you subscribe to anything, right? Why would you subscribe to a belief of something if you can't know, right? And the reason you would subscribe is if it would serve your energy in some way. The only reason you would subscribe to a belief without knowing exactly for sure what happened is by it serving your energy and your soul in some way, right? So obviously, if I say, oh, I believe that the Jordan Guy Stones were taken down, and this feels like a uh, confirmation that we shifted humanity into a, a more uplifting timeline, then it gives me this boost to do my work and I'm happy. And really that's all it did. And I mean, it's like, that's all the awareness and focus I want to put into that because I'm mostly spending most of my time working very hard on doing what I'm supposed to do anyway. <laughs> right. And there's a great video on this channel called Energy Mastery. When we talk about staying in our lane and exerting our energy, when you know what your mission is, you're on fire with your whatever you're supposed to be doing, your action steps, right? Okay, and so this brings us to the culminating theme of our talk today, which is it's time to step into our power and step into the 3D. And what this looks like for me is I feel that for a lot of us, we are really suspended, suspended in the new earth glass, I mean, the, the new age glass ceiling from the bottom, where we're kind of held in this bubble in the new age community. And because we're just finding our belonging here and we're just realizing we're not crazy, we're finding our footing it's important for the new age community to exist for that reason because we're here together. We have family. We have belonging. But once we have our footing and we know what we're doing, we have to re-engage, right? This is what collapses the timeline split, right? And eventually we will have to collapse the timeline split, right? Because collapsing the timeline split means actually creating heaven on earth, not heaven on earth in our mind. A lot of people say heaven on earth is a state of being. Yes, 10%, right? You have to be in your state of being of heaven on earth to create heaven on earth because creating happens from your vibration. So if you're in the vibration of heaven on earth, everything that you then create is from the vibration of heaven on earth. But just being in the vibration of heaven on earth, you might be a first waiver. If you're a first waiver, then actually that was your role to just be the vibration of heaven on earth. If you're a second, third waiver, then your job here on earth does have to do with actually doing stuff, <laughs> actually being out there, actually loving humanity. And then there's another part of the new age glass ceiling that blocks us from humanity is this it tries to make us think that the humans are stupid or, oh, the sheep, you know, they're not waking up and they're dirty and, oh, I don't even want them. And then, it you know, maybe it starts to slide you into alignment with maybe if they just all die, we'll inherit the earth. Wait a minute. <laughs> whose agenda is that? <laughs> I can't remember whose agenda that is. Right? So... Yeah, somebody said a sheeple. Now, this is a direct expression of a broken heart star. And unless we have gone through the process of healing our heart star extensively, you probably have a broken heart star. And even me, myself, at this point now, I'm still healing parts of my heart because our heart is a highly advanced light technology. Um, I've just been downloading this Christic Chakra class for Star Academy, and I'm just in the heart chakra right now. And it's long because the heart chakra is this incredible light technology, right? It has its, its structures that literally is built to transduce cosmic consciousness. 
And in order for cosmic love, divine love, to spin in the correct angle and in the correct velocity and the correct geometry into the space, into this earth, uh, unless it's in its original geometry, we're not going to be able to experience the extent of divine love that wants to flow into the, this earth through the light workers, through the star seeds, through the angelics who are here as part of the Christos realignment mission. Okay, and this broken heart is what keeps us in fear and judgment, disconnection. Right? Whew. And I believe, I mean, let's talk about, again, I mean, Jesus is the man. I also really, I mean, my main teacher is actually Babaji. Babaji was also the teacher of Jesus. And Babaji is called the great avatar because he really embodied, you know, it was, he was an embodiment. <laughs> he was an avatar. He was somebody that went into the mastery of the, the avatar path, which I believe is a path that's open for all people if it calls to you. It's this weird obsession though, right? It's like some people are obsessed with Pokemon cards. Other people are obsessed with, I don't know, sushi. Other people are obsessed with farming. My obsession is my DNA and the avatar path. And this is a very specific path of complete DNA activation. But, you know, I mean, give me, hit me up in the comment section if you feel like experiencing the full potential potential of your humanness as Christ incarnate is also what you're obsessed with, <laughs> right? Because that's really, um, the story I was going to tell is that there's a story of this woman who came and just poked Jesus' shirt and he, she'd been in pain for months, right? She had this illness and she was walking and she just poked Jesus' shirt and he was healed. Why was she instantaneously healed? Because his field was flooding with divine love because his heart was in its original divine coherent architecture. All right? And there's many components of the heart, okay? There is your high heart, there's your earth heart, there's your front and back heart, and there's your somatic heart in the base. And all of these has to be online. So many things have attacked all of these different parts of your heart for it to be offline. Uh-huh. But well, anyway, so now if we don't all have to be healing people like that, right? I think even just 10% of that would make a huge difference. <laughs> okay. If there's only 10% of that level of Christ love flowing through all of us on this planet, the world will shift in a very significant way. You know why? Because the heart is the channel of communication. Why is it that years ago when I tried to wake my parents up and I tell them all the stuff that I was finding out on the internet about disclosure, they're like, are you okay? <laughs> but now I stopped trying to convince them, right? And I just started to truly love them and truly love them right? Not even trying to love them, but allowing love to flow through me to them. What happened? They started waking up. They started agreeing with the things I was saying. They stopped resisting truth and they just are, <laughs> okay? And so we are learning to remember the original geometry of true love. True love breaks the curse. True love breaks the curse. Right? And this needs to happen in steps. And, you know, this is why the Earth Star Academy is here. It's really a step-by-step -step process. We heal the Earth self. We heal dimensions 1, 2, and 3. We activate into 11, 12, D, and beyond. And we come up with our action steps, right? So there's a business school component of it as well. So our souls embodied expressing our true divine power collapses the dimensional separation, right? Because what we're seeing is this bifurcation. And by saying, oh, it's just the bifurcation, enforces the bifurcation, 
right? The spiritual people are over there. Oh, look, those streaks are over there. And look, the dimensions are just getting wider apart. They want them to get it wider apart. They don't want us to be talking to humans. They don't want us to bring love into humanity. And that's what we're here to do. Okay? We're here to awaken. I'm here to awaken. I am here to awaken divine love in the heart of humanity. This just keeps coming back over and over because on my birthday every year, I contemplate my life purpose, right? Because I was born and I, I want to meditate on why I was born and how I can make myself useful to this world. And it just keeps coming back. My greatest desire, my deepest desire is for God's love, divine love to be awakened in the heart of humanity because every human being on this planet is starving for love. That's all it is. Every human being is starving for love. That's what lack is. That's what all the trauma is. That's what all the conflict is. Okay. Shoo. And so we came here to love this planet and love humanity. And beings don't want us to love humanity. This reminds me, Alexis, I wonder if you're still here because one year, Alexis Buck of Ascension Diaries invited me to a disclosure conference. It was dimensions of disclosure, dimensions of disclosure. Look, it's all coming together. Dimensions of disclosure in Ventura, California, right? And of course, Alexis Buck and I, we go way back and we have this very beautiful uh, dream for this community. And we always want to bring this dream into sketchy circumstances. <laughs> to try to realign the situation. And the hysterical thing is, you know, they brought me to this conference and they had the stage outside and it was like this conference was happening in this hotel and then this beautiful tent was happening on the grass outside and they kept us outside. They're like, you guys need to stay outside. And it's like that. We're here at this conference on planet Earth. The light workers are like, we're here to dream us new reality. And they're like, all right, that's cool. Just stay over there. Stay in the new age section of the false matrix. That's where you're supposed to be. Stay there. Don't talk to anyone. <laughs> right? And that's exactly what the bifurcation on earth is to me. That's what it feels like to me. All right? Now, every star seed goes through a period of bifurcation. It's important for us to separate from the false matrix so that we can fully integrate and become our true selves. Right? This is when we step into the, um, the shamanic journey, venture off from our tribe to discover a new frontier, discover who we truly are. But eventually we come back to the tribe with what we learned, right? And so now that we have realized that we're here on the earth, we're here for this Christos realignment mission, we've come from all over this universe and beyond, it's all true. We've come to create a new planet and it begins with embodying true love true love beyond description beyond confines beyond conditions we're here to embody true love now of course is that true love that communicates that true love begins to move you right that love begins to give you direction and i think one of the um, Star C mission supports coming up. We're going to do it on the heart's intelligence because it's just, you know, our true advanced light technology. Right? Mary says, How do we talk to the ones who don't want to have anything to do with us? Don't talk to them. <laughs> right? Okay. But just know that here's the thing I feel like love is like water, right? Love will flow and mold hard things like rocks, okay? But water will flow around the rocks. <laughs> water is not going to try to flow through the rock. But over time, water creates entire um, ecosystems, entire valleys. And so love will flow where it's needed and you will know where it's needed because love will flow through you and lead you there. 
Okay. Our job is to figure out what is blocking love from flowing inside of ourself. What is blocking love from flowing ends up being our trauma filaments of our heart chakra that is deactivated or dead light literal distortions in our light body that are keeping our soul from fully embodying and thus being able to express from our body and again we're talking about true love not this fluffy glittery fake love and light shit divine love god's love right and then through that you know in the coming decade i mean you guys i know that in 20 years and 20 years is not a long time in the grand scheme of things okay 20 years i believe the star be the star seeds are going to be interfacing and are going to be liaisons between the high galactic beings and the earth population through something like a galactic UN. And this is something that is grounded. Okay. I saw some fake version of this online the other day where it's like, we took over the UN. And I'm just like, <laughs> and of course people are falling for it. What about that lady who says she's the real queen of Canada? I mean, I, I don't know you guys. It's like we have our right brain and we have our left brain and we have our intuition and our spiritual side where all things is possible. And we have our critical thinking and we can't exist without either. We can't be balanced human beings without either. So in order to step into our power and feel our power and be able to express our power, we need to be embodied and know that our power is the power of creation. We were born from this original intent of the universe's desire to complete this lifetime of itself to complete this universal experiment of absolute free will, okay? And so because it's coming from source and God to reimagine the planet into heaven on earth, that is the power that is flowing through us. And we need to be able to allow that power to move through our body and move our body. And what is blocking that is our human self because it's, traumatized from the false matrix, a broken, disintegrated, destructuralized light body, a dead light and disincarnation in our heart chakra, and all of these things. And in order for us to fully anchor in this dimensional shift, we need to bring this amazing energy that we have and anchor it into the earth. Now, there's a lot of resistance there, right? We're like, oh, I don't want to look at it. Oh, I don't. I thought we could just go. I thought these aliens were going to pick us up and move us to a different planet. <laughs> well, there's going to be new foster care system that needs to be created. There's going to be new education systems that need to be created. There's going to be new hospitals that need to be created. And the only thing that's blocking you from doing those things is your belief of whether you can or can't, whether you have the power to. And this is a great hijack. Again, the government makes us believe that the government is the only entity that can create things like foster care systems, like a hospitals, right? It makes you believe that some other powerful being is in control of all of that. And so you can't, you don't have the power to do that. And it's a lie, okay? Let's just shine a light on that because nothing is stopping you from starting or opening a hospital <laughs> that is divine with plants growing out of it and there's herbs and, you know, a birthing center and all of that stuff, okay? And there's nothing stopping you from building a new foster care system and we can start small right maybe it's just creating a program for foster parents that they can really help the kids heal their inner children starting small starting where you are and if you don't have the skills to do what you need to do get the skills because the skills don't appear by magic <laughs> if you want to heal people but you have no idea how 
you want to be a healer, if you want to help humanity awaken, but you don't even understand how light bodies work, you don't understand how soul fragmentation works, you don't know how to perform soul retrievals, then go learn how to do it, right? That's your first step. And so the Earth Star Academy is here to hold space for all that stuff. Myself, I'm currently working on a program to, uh, and Kuan Yin is the, the overlighting master that is guiding me on this stuff. She says, use their suffering as a backdoor, <laughs> okay? Use their suffering, use what people are already suffering from, eating disorders, anxiety, depression, cancer, right? Trauma. All of these things that people are suffering from because people are more encouraged to cease that kind of suffering. And so obviously the solution to all of those things are knowledge of soul. People don't know that. So you sell them what you want, give them what they need. And so Kuan Yin is sharing with me that we can find the back door. So for me, I'm currently working on a program that I'm just going to inoculate the world with that cures eating disorders. And of course, eating disorders is just a disincarnation in the solar plexus. Okay. Eating disorders can only exist if you have no idea who your soul is and your soul is not inside of your body. <laughs> that is basically the cause of all disease, actually. So learning how souls incarnate into bodies is probably the greatest piece of knowledge that you can learn. And this is what we teach in the Earth Star Academy. It just takes a lot because, you know, it's not like I can make one YouTube video and tell you how to do it. It's an experience. Students of the Earth Star Academy experience this incarnation process on a daily basis. And, you know, this is the stuff that we're holding space for. And uh, so I definitely did not know Babaji before he started communicating with me. Kuan Yin's kind of well known, you know, in in culture. So, but anyway, um, I'm gonna drop a link in the comment section for the academy. It's www.earthstar.academy. We have an amazing community. We have an incredible curriculum where I break everything down so meticulously, and we go through the restructuring and the healing of our light body through the different levels, and it's essentially here to support your starseed mission on Earth. Um, we want to change the world. We're here to create a new world. I am here for the people that have a planetary leadership contract. That means we're here to literally lead this planet into a new um, experience of heaven on Earth, and we can do that. We can do that, and it's time to collapse that reality into the 3D. So on that note, um, my baby is calling me, <laughs> so I'm going to go hang out with my baby, but uh, I will see you guys next week on Starseed Mission Support. <laughs> Bye for now.